Hey there, and welcome to another Sienna weapon test. Today I'm looking at the Fireball Staff, which is my personal favorite. It's my go-to on pretty much any class, especially the Unchained. This weapon has crowd control, damage over time, and overheat as its traits, but keep in mind every fire weapon has overheat, so that's not too much of a worry. At the end of the video, I'm going to be doing a review to show the pros and cons and give an idea of how I feel the weapon fits on the battlefield. But I'm playing on champion so that you can actually see the fireball staff in action. Now, the fireball staff is pretty standard. Its charge attack is an explosive fireball, and its left click is just a little bolt of fire. But that little bolt of fire is actually armor piercing and has pretty decent damage. It does more damage to a single target than the charge attack. But the charge attack will hit an enemy multiple times, still not as much damage as just the basic, but on unarmored enemies it'll actually pierce through them, so when you see it against a horde you'll see it's pretty damn effective, given that it can just shred through the enemies and then blow up right in the middle of them. Oh, and turns out that's a cliff. <laughs> My goodness, that's just a plain rat okay, thought that was a storm fiend. <laughs> yeah, the fireball staff has a pretty hefty knockback on it. It's not quite as good as others, like the conflagration, but it's pretty heavy. And I'm gonna pop a strength potion for this. Let's just nuke this patrol. The fireball staff is good against patrols, but it has one negative, that its knockback is so strong that you kind of separate the patrol. You don't really keep them in one nice clump so you can just keep hitting all of them. They do thin out a little bit. But as far as negatives go, that's not a massive one. So it's not too bad. It still does decent damage to them and sets them on fire. One of the big downsides of the Fireball Staff is that it's so explosive that on Champion and Legend, you are going to be hitting yourself in close quarters with it. The actual damage you receive isn't too much, but if you're running low on health, it can start to add up, so you want to use a melee weapon in place of that. And there goes a warp fire. I tend to use the charge attack on them, you don't really need to, but it's nice for that extra flinch. Even if you miss them, you're probably going to get a pretty solid flinch on them. It's definitely a weapon I like for taking out specials. And if you've got a nice corridor, it's an extremely good staff for holding a horde back. The Firestorm staff can be good, but it's got limited range. With the Fireball, because of that piercing right down the line, and then the massive explosion, you can seriously shred a horde with it. Ooh, and I hear a loot rat. This staff is also good at taking them down. If I can actually catch up to him, but it's not the staff's fault that I'm slow. Okay, fantastic teleport there. <laughs> that loot rat might be getting away, but the AoE and the nice flinch and knockback is really good at taking out the loot rat. Let's see if I can snag him. Oh, I didn't quite get him. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take the healing as opposed to the loot rat, because I actually want to get through this level. Alright, he's still in here, so we will get to test it out. Although he's a little stuck in a corner. <laughs> okay. So maybe not the best test for taking down a loot rat, but hey, it does it. And look at that, a loot die and a potion. Nice stuff. Now, this should be a pretty good test of the Fireball Star, because you're getting swarmed by enemies, which means great, you can tear through them, blow them up at a distance, but it also means you might be forced to close quarters battling. Which, with the Fireball, again, it's not going to do much damage when it does hit you, but if just about every shot you take is hitting you, that will start to add up. And your teammates might not always appreciate getting set on fire. But let's test out the heat generation. The rate of fire is actually pretty nice on this weapon. You can really get a barrage going. And for how many shots I'm taking, how much damage I'm dealing, that is a really nice fire ratio. Get 
and as you can see, it is absolutely incinerating the enemies. Even small enemies with shields will get completely nuked by this thing. It's really only the shielded storm vermin that have any kind of resistance, but those guys could resist a nuke. And there you go, they never really got close to us. I'm stinging my teammates a little bit, but that's not much of an issue. And I am having to vent, but again, you get a lot of shots in before you actually need to vent. The staff also isn't terrible for advancing. Because you pierce through them and then it explodes, you can really hamper enemies in a massive line at a distance. But if you're attacking close to moving forward, again, you will kind of be shooting at your feet. Not that friendly fire and self damage is too much of an issue in this game because it really doesn't hit you that hard. And on another note, it's a fantastic weapon for getting temporary health. You get a solid horde, two or three shots will fill your health up. And you can see in this Chaos Warrior, the charge attack does get through and it can just stop him dead in his tracks. Those shield icons coming up are actually because of the damage over time with the fire effect, not because of the charge attack hitting him. The only downside is that against an armored enemy, the charge attack isn't actually doing that much damage. So if you're fighting Storm Vermin, better to use the light attack, but with a Chaos Warrior you don't have that choice, you need to charge attack. So a melee weapon might serve you better against them. Oh, there's a troll. Nice, we get to see it against a boss. This is one of my personal favorite weapons for taking down a boss, especially a troll because it sets him on fire. But you know what? Let's jump down here. Get a little bit of space to run around. But you can see that health bar is dropping rapidly. Now hopefully my teammates actually take him down and bring him down here so I can help, but it looks like I might be going solo after this. Alright, it's not too bad for lobbing up a hill either. There we go, got his attention. Even solo, this is absolutely destroying the troll, and because it generates so little heat, I can just keep on hitting. But I do have to be a bit careful, because I don't really want to overheat when I'm fighting a troll and Carillion's taken down. But if you can get that out, absolutely nukes him, and a big part of that is because he's such a big target, you'll be hitting him a few times because of that AoE that still affects single targets with multiple hits. That might be one of my favorite attributes of this weapon. There's a Blightstormer in the distance, but this long range weapon can hit him. Took him down while I was in the vortex. It does have a bit of drop to it, so at a distance you do have to arc it down. Just pretend there's some gravity affecting it. Well, that's probably actually what it is. But you can still take down a long range target with this. It's not the most direct at that range, but it'll serve your purpose if you can aim it. So I'm just going to light attack these storm vermin because it is stronger to do that. And they're not so clustered up that I think a charge attack is going to benefit me. Alright, Krillian's gone for the third time this level. Normally she's the strong one, <laughs> but not this time. But if you can get a nice corner with this weapon, I'll keep saying it, absolute annihilator of hordes. And look at that temp health going up. I didn't even hit red heat and I've got full temp health. That's pretty solid. You know what? Let's take the patrol. Try and hold them back as much as I can with the star. Oh, they got a warpy behind them. Bloody hell. And you can see, not a huge amount of heat coming from this. And because I'm playing the Unchained, I can just handle the heat when it does build up. Oh, two warp fires, and there we go. That patrol, two warp fire throwers taken down without much effort. Oh, we'll add a rattling gunner on for that as well. Alright, let's get the staff out and start doing some damage. 
and now we get to annihilate a horde. And one good thing about this weapon, really easy to just switch directions with it. You can go left to right, no problem at all. With weapons like the Beam Staff and the Conflagration Staff, it can be a little harder because that beam, it takes a while to cut through the horde and the Conflagration takes time to charge up. But with this, you can just, any direction at any time, you can nuke it. And <laughs> yeah, a horde does not stand up against this thing. Indoors, a horde is not going to be able to stand up to this weapon. It's going to cut through anyone it hits, and then that wall is so close when it explodes, you'll have one or two guys who might get through. <laughs> and let's see. So you can see that has a limited range, but on most maps you're not really going to run into that limit. It's such a long distance. On maps like Against the Grain and Fort Braxenbrooker you might, but really you should never have that much of an issue. And I've learnt to take a little pause here to let the AI catch up and battle these guys. <laughs> And you can see that nice damage over time, even when I was switching to drink that potion, I was still taking people down. And there we go, taken down. But here we go, that is the end, and that was a pretty easy run. Ultimately, the fireball staff let us just breeze through that. So, my favorite things about the Fireball Staff would be especially its ability to pierce enemies. In a horde, you're not just going to hit the front and blow them up. You're going to cut right through, even up to the first 10 it seems is pretty easy to get through, and then explodes. That means if a horde is in a column, it's going to be completely annihilated. Then again, if the horde spread out, you've got that nice AoE, so you can switch around to all the groups you need to hit. It also does that damage over time, so again, if anyone in the horde actually survives the initial blast, they're going to be burning. This weapon destroys hordes, whether you're inside or outside. It doesn't generate that much heat. For how many attacks you can get in before you even get to red in your overheat bar, you get a lot of damage out. You can really just send out a barrage of fireballs over any target that's in front of you, and you can do that for a long time. It doesn't perform too badly against armor. For Storm Vermin, it's pretty solid. The light attack against a single Storm Vermin can easily just cut him down, and that charge attack can really nicely flinch a group of them. Even a patrol, you can really nicely flinch and keep them in place. It's not quite as good as the Beam Staff as far as range is concerned. It is limited, but it's still pretty long ranged. And if you get the arc down, you can really easily take down enemies at afar. Blightstormers, flamers, rattling gunners, none of them are going to stand up to this stuff. It is very good against bosses. I would say it's probably one of the best staffs, maybe even the best in my opinion. With its charge attack, it will hit a single target multiple times, and you can test that out against the training dummies to get a better idea of how that works. It does have an initial hit, and then a smaller hit, as well as damage over time. So if you can just get a big target in front of you and keep slamming fireballs into it, it's going to shred it. And if your teammates aren't with you, you can easily lob it over to help them out wherever they are. Here are the cons. The biggest one, I would say, is friendly fire, which ultimately isn't that much of an issue in the game. But the self-fire can be. If you're low on health, and you're having to make ground, because of it piercing enemies, sometimes you want the fireball a little closer to yourself to knock down the enemies right in front of you. But because you can get so many attacks out, that self-fire and friendly fire can start to add up, and you can start feeling the effects of it. But ultimately, it's not that much of an issue. It's not that great against Chaos Warriors. They have such thick armor that the charge attack doesn't do a huge amount to them and the damage over time is not going to be useful on them. But that's really it. This weapon is very strong. It's good against bosses, it's good against hordes in multiple situations, 
It's pretty good against armor, and it's good against single target. Even against shields, it can take them down. Overall, this weapon is a great all-rounder. So, if you're a beginner to the game, this is definitely a weapon I'd recommend checking out. It's very easy to use, it's pretty much just point and click, and it'll get you through just about any situation. There's a reason this is my personal favorite. So, I hope that taught you something, I hope you enjoyed that, and let me know what you think of the fireball stuff down below. Thanks for watching.